What the heck's going on, everyone? How are you? Sports Snippets, Dennis Sullivan here on a late night Sunday, a week actually, exactly a week after the Super Bowl, that being Super Bowl 57 concluded. Here to discuss, I want to talk about football in general, not just the NFL. I want to talk a little, I'm going to discuss the Super Bowl. We'll get started on that. I want to discuss a little bit about the, also the XFL and the USFL, as now we have. For the first time, I believe, certainly the first time I can remember, all three leagues operating in 2023. So before I get started, you do like the content this particular video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe as well to my channel. That would be 100%. Actually, that'll be 110%. Completely awesome. So let's get started, guys. My final thoughts on the Super Bowl. Obviously, that has ended... Um, about a week ago, so uh, not going to spend too much time on that, but it was a great game, one of the better ones I've ever seen. Didn't really matter to me who won the game, just wanted to see a good matchup, and that's exactly what we got. I mean, that's exactly what we got, 38-35 uh, in favor of the Kansas City Chiefs, a three-point victory. You watch that first half, you're thinking, the Eagles got this, the Eagles got it all the way. They looked like the aggressors. They were they were controlling the time of possession. They were just basically controlling the game. Patrick Mahomes was clutch. He came through when it counted most. There were a few other unsung heroes. I mean, I know Mahomes gets the MVP. I'm in agreement with that. I'm not going to argue that. However, play of the game, my opinion, was the punt return by Kadarius Toney. Completely shifted everything. Huge punt return. Almost took it all the way. Momentum completely switched on that. Also, Isaiah Pacheco gets uh, he gets some credit on as far as me, me watching the game goes. I give him a lot of credit. He was kind of the emotional leader, running the ball really hard, getting getting his trying to get his team fired up, get some momentum going. He also produced pretty well, 76 yards on the ground and a touchdown on 15 carries, just over five yards a carry. He was very productive. The receiving combo of Juju Smith-Schuster and Travis Kelsey was most of the targets and the receptions for Patrick from throws that make that from Patrick Mahomes. Kelsey finishes six catches, 81 yards and a touchdown. Schuster almost equally as productive as well. And all this would offset Jalen Hurts, who was amazing. The guy was fantastic. Almost 400 total yards. He rushes for three touchdowns, runs for 70 yards, throws for like 304 yards and another touchdown. He accounts for four, touchdown, four touchdowns and almost 400 total yards. Had the Eagles won, definitely Jalen Hurts gets the MVP. You could almost make the argument that Jalen Hurts should get the MVP even though his team lost the Super Bowl. I know we don't really see that very often. That's how good he played. So that's where we stand, guys. So the Super Bowl ends on the 12th, right? So nighttime, Sunday night, the 12th. Then we had a grand total of five days of no football. And then here we go. Saturday, the 18th, starts the XFL, which I'll say this. We saw it debut in the early 2000s. It came back, I think, for like five weeks or something in 2020. So it's had a, a very abbreviated history. I like what I saw. Watched a little bit of the Las Vegas um, Arlington game. Arlington pulled out a close game. I think they won by like two points. Also saw the tail end of Dwayne... The Rock Johnson's speech, which I thought was good. I mean, he's t the part I heard was fine. I mean, it was completely not only acceptable. I thought it was good. He's talking about we gave you a second chance, and you know, here's your chance to be uh, noticed and seen, and 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 all that stuff. And I liked it. And I tell you what, I like these other leagues. I like it a lot, XFL and USFL, for a few main reasons. Number one, for that reason, meaning there's nothing wrong. You have minor leagues baseball, you have development league and basketball. These are development leagues, if you will, if you want to look at it like that, in football. Okay, USFL had a very competitive championship last year. Philadelphia Stars in Birmingham played to the very end. Birmingham won. 
uh, that league also making a comeback last year. So, no, so number one, why I like these leagues is really, if you go back to the speech that The Rock had, yeah, here is your second chance, or here is your chance to be seen. You know, just like regular work environment, you see employees, male, female, can get overlooked, right? Can that same thing can happen in uh, professional sports? So this this is a good thing. And number two, from what I'm seeing with ticket prices, certainly is an affordable venue when you look at professional sports these days. And this is not at all to single out the NFL, not at all, because you see it through across the board, uh, especially from what I'm seeing, um, make that basketball, football, baseball a little bit too, yeah, baseball a little bit too. But from what I'm seeing, XFL and USFL are very affordable venues to attend. Now, I believe, if I heard correctly, USFL will play all their home games in four locations, not eight, because there's like eight teams, right? Whereas I think XFL, you just play at the other team's home site, as far as I know. So these are great things, guys. Um, these are great benefits to these leagues, I think. So I fully support both leagues. Now getting back to football being a year-round, a year-round sport, absolutely positively. So we had a grand total of five days, no football, right? After the Super Bowl into the XFL. XFL ends in May. I think it's early to mid-May. I think it's early May when they have their championship. USFL, which starts, I think, in mid, sometime in April, early to mid-April, goes to the beginning of July. Then when's the NFL Hall of Fame game, right? That's usually the end of July or very beginning of August, but most years, from what I remember, that's at the end of July. So you're really looking at a grand total in the year of 2023, about three to three and a half weeks of July, no football, and five days in February, and that's it. Otherwise, it's year round. Now, myself, for what that's worth to you guys, as far as me being the sports fan, of course, I'm going to watch March Madness, obviously. That's a huge event. I love watching that. Major League Baseball, I'm going to certainly watch. NBA playoffs, I'm certainly going to watch. But it's nice to have these other leagues as football, which really is, the, from what I'm seeing, guys, it is the most popular. I mean, all the sports are popular, but this really is now in, in the 2020s, right? This is the most popular sport, and it is a year-round deal. So, let me know what you think. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Good job winning their second, that group, that is, winning their second Super Bowl, I believe, in the last four years. You know the Eagles will be back. They'll be back strong. Jalen Hurts more than proved himself in a, on the biggest stage. Great watching that game. So let me know what you think, guys. We'll catch up. we got plenty to talk about. As NBA is now heating up, I'll be back talking about that, talking about March Madness. And I will see you soon via YouTube video. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.